Okay, in order to get some aluminum TIG welding passes like these ones here, this is gonna require some accuracy and a very stable arc. And after teaching people how to do stuff like this over the years, I've got some very important tips that are gonna help you to get some great looking results with stuff like this as well. Let's go. Okay, so when we are TIG welding aluminum, we need the perfect balance between the shape of our weld, good edges where the filler material blends and transitions into the base material, and especially with aluminum TIG welding, we want that finish. When we get all the variables balanced, the important ones we're gonna talk about, we get the dimes that shine, this is what we want. And when I've been able to get my setup particularly dialed for some really good accuracy, I'm able to weld some really fine or thin material and get some really nice stuff getting some smaller welds as well. So let's go over the first tip that's gonna help you out here. This is gonna be very important with aluminum. This is gonna be focusing on your starts. The start of each pass is going to be absolutely crucial to everything that's gonna follow. It's very important to get everything perfect at the beginning of every pass that you do. I always talk about it as being the most important part of every weld. But if you try and do a weld where the start isn't really established properly or everything hasn't quite developed before you start moving, or perhaps at the start you have a little bit of an imbalance between the amount of filler material that you are using in relation to the material thickness or heat you are using, moving away from the start, continuing on with the full pass is gonna be very hard to get things back under control. We wanna make sure that we take the time and attention to focus on getting everything perfect at the start of every pass. But if everything's done perfectly at the start, by the time you start traveling, there should be nothing left to do except for just babysit. Take a look at this example here. We can see at the beginning of this lap joint, everything has been established with perfect size and really good profile. We don't see any overfilling. We don't see any underfilling or overheating. The amount of filler material that I am using here looks pretty much perfect in relation to the amount of heat that I am welding with here. Now looking at the weld footage of this one here, look at how much time I'm taking at the start. I'm giving things a decent amount of filler material to properly fill up the profile, but most importantly, I'm making sure that I give it adequate heat. It's gonna take a few seconds for everything to stabilize, but once everything is good to go, I start moving. Now, what is common is people are gonna flash up, establish their puddle, and then feel the need to get going with everything right away. This is pretty common when working with aluminum. A lot of people feel pressure to get going right away out of fear of burning through the material. Without the time spent to adequately develop the puddle at the beginning of the pass, this is essentially a puddle that has not been developed properly before somebody tries to start moving it. It takes a little bit of time at the beginning, a little more attention to detail. We wanna make sure that the filler material settles down correctly and the profile or shape of the weld is exactly what we want before we move away from the start. We wanna keep a close watch on the edges. We wanna make sure the filler material is blending in smoothly to the base material. Typically when I flash up for any type of welding joint, I'm gonna give it good heat right away, but I'm also gonna give it filler material almost immediately. What happens is when you give it filler material almost right away, essentially you're gonna be heating up the filler material a little bit more than you're gonna be heating up the base material. Giving things a little bit of filler right at the beginning is gonna to help to prevent any overheating. This is really nice, especially when working with aluminum. But the most important thing that this is gonna do is it's gonna allow you to hang out for a few extra seconds. A little bit of filler material, a little bit of extra time to hang out at the start. The thinking behind every single start that you do, no matter what joint or weld you are doing, is that when you flash up to start your arc, we fill and chill. As I said, giving yourself a little bit of filler material right at the start is gonna allow you a few seconds that you can hang out at the beginning and let things establish. Obviously, as long as you aren't getting into amperage, which is too high in relation to the material thickness you are using, you're gonna be able to hang out a little bit longer and you can afford to spend some time to allow things to properly establish. This is especially important with joints like a fillet joint or something like that. Those ones in particular are extremely tough and sometimes really grumpy to get started. Spending a little bit of extra time to let things properly develop and establish before moving is certainly worth it with a joint like that. But as well, doing some really thin stuff like this outside corner here, same thing. A little bit of filler material right off the start and controlling the heat to make sure things stabilize properly at the beginning. The philosophy with a start like that is essentially all of the hard work is done at the beginning right there. Like I said, once you start moving with that one, all that's left to do is essentially just babysit what you started and established at the beginning of the pass. Okay, so like I said, the start has absolutely got to be the most important part because obviously it is the start. But the next most important thing that is gonna help you to get really good control of your arc is absolutely going to be the tungsten preparation. 
All right, this here, this is our little buddy here. This is the tungsten electrode. Now, typically when I'm getting my machine set up, I wanna program my machine with the lowest start amps possible. You can see me setting up my Everlast here. I have things set up to a pretty low setting that I can start with. This will be my minimum amperage on the foot pedal. And then once I get the puddle established, I can get into the heat a little more with my foot pedal. Now at low amperage with a really properly prepared tungsten, pu -pu -pu, that's a lot of peas. This arc is gonna snap up and establish really easily. When we start out, we do not want the arc to be wandering around. Sometimes at low amps, it's common to see the arc kind of flickering from side to side. We want things to specifically lock on and establish an arc on exactly what we are aiming at. Especially like this one that we looked at already, the outside corner joint with relatively thin material. If your arc is jumping from side to side when you're trying to get started with something like that, this is gonna give you a really frustrating and terrible start to your line. And we just talked about how important a proper start is. So with the machine programmed at a relatively low start amp, at this point, let's talk about how I prepare my tungstens. So regardless of what preparation you prefer using with aluminum TIG welding, all that I really ask is that just make sure it is clean. Please, don't use a tungsten that you might have dipped a little bit. Maybe there's just a little bit of contamination on it, not that much. But sometimes when I'm training somebody and I look at their tungsten, come on now, this is trash. Don't do this to yourself. Especially when you are first learning, make it easy on yourself. Make sure every tungsten that you use is absolutely spotless or even brand new. If you take the time to use a tungsten that has been prepared properly and is absolutely spotless, you are going to thank yourself for it later. Now, hear me out. I prefer to run a tungsten with a little bit of a ball on the end of it. Oh my gosh, no. I know that there's a lot of people who would disagree with this, but hear me out. Let's go over perhaps why this might be a good option for you. Obviously, like we're talking about, if we want good arc control, we want a tungsten that has a very fine point on it. Now, I've talked about this pretty often on my channel here, but when you run a tungsten with a pointed tip like this, or even in some cases, if you're running a tungsten with a blunted end like this one here, it is really common that you're gonna see the tip of the tungsten misshape really easy. Or even in some circumstances, they're gonna form crazy shapes. And in some cases, these crazy shapes can go absolutely nuts and do wild stuff like this. Now, the reason that you might see this happening, whether it is just fluttering, or if you're seeing things completely misshape and look completely crazy, this is a problem with your balance setting. What this indicates is that your balance setting needs finer adjustment for the exact amperage that you are welding at. Now, that's a whole nother subject. I'll send you somewhere to learn a little bit more about that at the end of this episode. Now, when I'm talking about preparing a tungsten with a ball on the end of it, I am not talking about a tungsten with a ball on the end of it like this, no. Obviously with the end of the tungsten looking like this, we're gonna have pretty lousy accuracy. This is what I'm talking about right here. This is a 3 32nd of an inch tungsten. So you can see how small this tiny little ball actually is. I have this area tapered back here and then you can see the ball on the end of it. And again, tiny. Now the reason, especially for people that are just learning how to TIG weld aluminum, I recommend doing something like this is essentially with a small ball preparation on the end of the tungsten, they're going to be able to get away with a bit of inaccuracy to any balance setting. Simply because the ball on the end is gonna be a little bit more robust against a balance setting that isn't completely perfect, this is gonna to help to prevent any fluttering or misshaping on the end of the tungsten. So it's kind of a great middle ground in between trying to give us a bit of a break with any balance setting inaccuracy we may have, yet still being fine enough that it's going to offer really good accuracy and stability of the arc. So if your tungsten has a preparation that's a little bit too big, or if you have contamination kicking on it like this here, your accuracy and stability is going to be Get something new, clean it up properly, and when you flash up your arcs, your arc is gonna lock on much more targeted and it's going to remain more stable. Now, sometimes I hear people talk about the actual type of tungsten that they use is going to help with accuracy. Personally, I don't particularly find this to be completely true. For aluminum TIG welding, I typically use like a 2% lanthanated tungsten like this or a seriated tungsten even. Basically, I just make sure that these are super clean and the preparation on the end of it is exactly how I want it. Obviously, a lot of people are gonna have favorite types of tungstens that they use, but just do some research to find out what works best for you and your machine. There are some tungstens that are going to work particularly well or work not at all with transformer or inverter type machines. So no matter what you're using, just do your research, make sure it's cool for whatever setup you have. Now, this last suggestion here that I'm gonna make is not typically something that a lot of people assume will help with accuracy. However, when you start getting into a higher level of different joint configurations with aluminum TIG welding, 
This is absolutely something that's going to help you out a lot. And this subject that we're going to address now is our gas settings. We talked about this in an episode a little while ago when I did the same thing specifically for stainless steel. But the exact same thing goes for aluminum, that is right. The settings for your gas, especially when working on more advanced joint configurations, is directly going to affect your puddle's stability. Now, when working on basic plate joints, you might not particularly notice much of a difference with this at all. But like I said, with more advanced or tricky joint configurations, you are going to notice your puddle is going to be pushed around or a little less stable if your gas settings are especially too high. If your gas flow rate is excessive and you are going around corners on stuff like this here, you are definitely going to notice that all of a sudden your puddle is going to become excessively wobbly. I'm pretty sure that's a wobbling term. Or all of a sudden the arc might flicker off and point in a direction that you're not actually completely aiming at. Now on the flip side of things, having a gas setting that is too low probably won't affect anything to do with your accuracy. But obviously having inadequate gas coverage is going to affect your welding area or your gear in a different way, which is not good. But as far as keeping good accuracy to the setup that we have put together so far, make sure your gas value coming out of the torch is not set too high. Now, the volume of gas coming out of the torch changes in relation to the cup size that you are using. If you're using a smaller cup for aluminum, like a number five or something like that, we obviously, for a smaller cup opening, want to have less gas coming through it. Working with an aluminum setup like this here, I'm typically going to have about 12 and a half CFH coming out of the actual torch head. And again, I'm going to double check this with this thing here. This is called a flow meter. We're going to put it on the end of the cup and we're actually going to measure the exact gas value coming out of the cup opening. Now, using a smaller cup, like something like a number five or a number six is going to be a little more prone to the arc being pushed around by the gas value being set a little bit too high, simply because obviously the opening of the cup is much smaller. And I think you're going to find that going around something like this here, if the gas volume is set too high for the cup size you are using, the puddle is going to become a little less stable and a little less predictable. Now, personally, in my torch for aluminum, I prefer using a gas lens setup. I personally find that the gas distribution coming out through a screen in the gas lens, it's a lot more even and a lot more stable, especially going around shapes and outside corners and stuff like that. And when I'm doing something like an outside corner joint, I particularly notice a better coverage of gas when using something like a gas lens as opposed to a gas diffuser setup. I find that the gas lens and the screen inside of it provides a more even and smooth distribution of gas. And anytime that I'm welding aluminum, typically I'm going to probably use something like a number six cup. So using a gas lens for a smooth distribution of gas in combination with something a little lower, like about 12 and a half CFH or so, going around shapes like this one here, doing outside corner stuff like this here, I was always pretty confident about getting good results that I was very happy with. Okay, I have given you a really good idea of some small details that we can make adjustments to to get you potentially a really big payoff with your arc accuracy. Taking all these things into consideration together, I think you're going to notice that you're going to see a big difference with the control of your arc. Now, if you want to register and take a free class with me online, check out this class here. This is going to be an intro to everything that you need to know getting started with aluminum TIG welding. This is going to be a complete outline to getting a good understanding from the bottom up with TIG welding aluminum. And again, it is completely free. Go register and check it out. It's on demand. You can watch it as many times as you want. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty James. Bill and chill. We'll talk soon. Peace.